Hey guys, this is Nick Christopher with Mob Tales again. Hope you guys are doing well. Please share, subscribe, and make comments when the show is over. Definitely appreciate that. Uh, today we have a very special guest, a uh, friend, good friend, and a uh, great actor. Uh, it's James Ciccone. Uh James, we'd like uh, thank you for coming in, and uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for having me here. It's always a pleasure to be uh, part of anything you're working on. Thank you. Appreciate oh, thank it. Thank you very much. Same here. Um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, get uh, introduce you, you know, and ask you a couple of questions so the people who don't know too much about you can get a little familiar. Um, I, mean, <clears throat> I, have a, I learned a lot about you through the years and watching you on TV and stuff like that. And um, I learned a little bit more about you before we did the show today. And it's interesting how you have um, grown as an actor. Um, being a Brooklyn boy, which I'm trying, you're born from born in Brooklyn, and um, it's unfortunate, I, from what I understand, that you um, lost your dad right before, right before you didn't, when you were born. You didn't get to know your father, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, so my, um, <clears throat> I, re I really, I never knew my dad. I have no recollection of him. Uh, he died when I was two. We, we were for a big family. I was the youngest of ten. And uh, he had uh, he had a bad heart, and uh, it was 1965. He'd under, he actually undergone open heart surgery, which was very brand new at that at that time. Surgery was a success, but he, you know he had passed away a few days later. It was a relatively brand new thing. Now they you go in and they, they they can fix your heart from your leg or your or, or your arm. It's amazing what they do now. Science has come a long way. But yeah, I didn't have the, uh, the 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 pleasure or the opportunity to know him. I don't have any recollection. So yeah, I kind of grew up hard, grew up tough. There was, uh, as I said, I'm the tenth, I'm the baby. Uh, yeah, you know, we grew up in Brooklyn. We grew up, uh, we struggled a lot. My mom raised us, uh, and that was that. And I think, you know, growing up under those circumstances or you know those conditions is kind of. Uh, Bill's character, in a way, of it's uh, something that you can't, uh, you know, you can't learn certain things. You learn when your the circumstances are thrown at you. That kind of creates the character and the fabric of who you are. So. Right. I, I mean, that would. And I think being that the case, that you know, you grew up that way, which is difficult, I'm sure, because um, I, I I think your first role, if I'm right, was um, a film called. Neighborhood story. When you play little, you play little, you play little Al. You have to remind me about that one, huh? <laughs> uh, so I was, I'm, I'm thinking that would, and it was a Brooklyn story. So you fit right in, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of, it was kind of a Brooklyn story, and I think, I think the, the filmmaker, the creator, was from. Um, he might have been from the. Uh, the fish market down in Manhattan or uh, down that way. But yeah, same thing, kind of in Brooklyn. Oh, I think you might have been from Greenpoint. Yeah. But I definitely fit into that world there. Hold on, I got my headphones. I might throw them on for a second, but uh, okay. see if it gets a little noisy. But any, anyway, uh, we'll, we'll wrestle with the headphones later. But yeah, definitely. That was a um, an interesting, interesting uh, uh, story. And, you know, when you start out in this business, like most people may know, most people may not know, I, I call them to work for pizza uh, films. You know, you, uh, you you pretty much, you know, you'll do it for free. You're just trying to get some footage. You're trying to, you know, you know, make your bones, so to speak, in, in the film business. I had started late. Um, I was pretty talented as a kid. I was a musician. I played I played trumpet. It was uh, first chair, old city band, and old city orchestra. And I won a couple of scholarships to go to summer camp. And then I had gone to Performing Arts High School, which the older folks would remember, they did the movie Fame there. They, they were actually filming some of the movie while I was there. They didn't film a movie in the school, but just exteriors they did. Uh, people like you know Al Pacino had gone there, Liza Minnelli went, went there, a lot, a lot of uh, very talented people at the old school on 46th Street, where the original school was. Then they actually moved over by Lincoln Center uh, some years later as the demand got bigger. But it was only like a couple of hundred kids in the school. I think it might have been 75 kids in each grade, four grades. So maybe about 300 kids total. And like, you know, 
five, 10,000 kids would audition every year. And I was fortunate I got into school there. Um, but I was, I was a musician and I had, you know, got exposed to some of the, the acting with the other students. I used to go down to HB Studios back then, Uta Hagen was alive. And I'd taken a couple of classes with her and Bill Hickey. And then I kind of disconnected from the performing arts community. Uh, life got in the way, uh, the street life and some other stuff that I don't want to really talk too much about, but uh, I wound up journeying back into uh, saying after I had, uh, you know, done some soul searching, was an adult in my mid forties. I said, what is it I really wanted to do with myself? What is it I, 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 I want to do in my life to make me feel whole and complete. And I had always kind of regretted, um, you know, leaving like the performing arts. Um, and I always wondered what my life would have been like had I, you know, stuck, stuck the arts out. So I had revisited, you know, the arts and journey, you know, back into the world and of, of acting. I went back taking some classes again and stuff and started to do some of the smaller budget uh, things like Neighborhood Story uh, was one of them. I'd done a couple of uh, student films over at NYU, uh, Tish, I would go down there, audition, make friends with the kids, tell them to tell their classmates, I will, you know, I'll, I'll do the films and, you know, for their students, if they have a role for me. And I did a bunch of those and tried to do a couple of my own things. And, uh, and then I, I wind up, I remember I had auditioned for that film. There was like a line around the block. They had put it out on backstage. And uh, I finally got into audition and I, I, you know, they had called me, they wanted me to come back for the part. And, and I came back in, they wanted to give me a part and, the two lead actors then had like left the film. It was a bit of a mess, you know, there, there was no money there. Like the other actors figured out, the real actors had figured out that this wasn't really like, you know, film with any money behind it. So, um, but I didn't know any better. So I stuck around and stuck it out. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, it was a learning experience. It was a growing experience. It, it was a lot of fun, but it was sort of a mob story uh, about this fella um, named Jimmy Ice, uh, the, the the filmmaker creator, his name was Jimmy Gencarelli, and it was supposed to be loosely based on his life story. And uh, and yeah, so I had done that. And then, you know, from there I had journeyed on and done a couple of those, uh, what I call work for pizza projects. You know, they, they feed you, you don't get paid, but you get you get, you know, pizza and you, you whack up the pizza, you know, eight guys, you get a slice each or whatever it is. <laughs> And, and and yeah, then from there I had uh, started doing uh, doing some more projects. I'd done a, I did another mob movie. The guy um, was his name uh, Joe Melly. He owns a restaurant in Jersey, great steakhouse. And it was it was a project called Jeez, um, was it? Rotten Luck. It was like a boxing movie about a boxer who took a dive. Uh, yeah, I did I did a few like that. Um, Another one called Lotto, uh, I done with Jerry Russo. He died. It was another work for pizza yeah, film. I knew Jerry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jerry was, was a nice guy. He was a good guy. He was, he was, he was trying, always trying. And yeah. then I finally had booked my first professional thing. I'd say probably about about four or five years after. But for, it took me a good four years of grinding. I booked the I booked the soap opera as the world turns. And I had, uh, <laughs> I had played a card player, you know, guy, guy playing, played poker or something, a couple of lines. And that was the first thing I booked. And then from there, I went on to started to book some, some network television shows like, uh, Blue Bloods. And then the first mob role that I played in a real project was I, in, in Boardwalk Empire. I had played, uh, Joe, one of Joe, Joe Mazzaria's henchmen. And I got to do a couple of, couple of episodes in there. And, and, and that, that was a good experience uh, to work on that project. And then from there on, I continued on to do, you know, the professional level work and uh, kind of stayed away from that. But I always see, I seem to get cast a lot as the mob. So obviously it's just a mob show, which is why you called me in. Uh, my first guest star was in a show called Person of Interest. And I played a mobster in that, some guy who owned a trucking company called Frank Capello. And, and I knew there was a guy who grew up with his name was Frank Capello. So I got a kick out of that. But that was the character's name. And uh, 
Yeah, it was it was a nice a nice piece uh, opposite what the hell's the guy's name? Kevin Chapman. I got to work opposite him. You might know Kevin from uh, Mystic River, among some other things. He's in City on a Hill. Yeah, so I did. I had a, a, a what they call a one day guest star with him, which was it was a nice nice big scene, you know. And then uh, and then yeah, I mean I I don't know the they, the mob things I, that I I don't I don't remember half of them. Um, you, you might have to refresh my memory. I know I did the Irishman. Uh, I worked get to work opposite Joe Pesci in there. It was pretty interesting. Oh, Deuce. Uh, Deuce, the Deuce, right? With Michael Raspoli and James Franco. Yeah, I just worked with Michael again recently. Uh, yeah, the Deuce. I did three seasons on that. I played a mob boss by the name of uh, Carmine, right? Carmine Patricia. Yeah, but he's he's supposed to be O'Neill Delacroce. That's who he's supposed to be. So yeah. if you look at really the guy who Michael Spoli plays is Rudy Pippolo. And these guys were under, um, you know, they, they, these are the Gambino guys. Yeah, Carlo. Right. And uh, th this was the underboss. This was the O'Neill Delacroix's club. Because you even have in, in the third season where John Gotti and his crew comes in to speak with me. And, and you know, so I would say that this guy would I, ideally be be O'Neill Delacroix because he was the underboss. They had established that. And that, so that would factually be him. But yeah, that was fun. I was for three seasons. I got to play that role. It was uh, it, it was good to, you know, James Franco directed a couple of the episodes I was in and to work with, with Michael Waspoli. He's a really, really great actor and, a, and an all around good guy um yeah yeah what else what else nick help me out what else did i uh <laughs> well oh, i just I go do, ahead i do want to mention that you did i mean i know you you played a lot of supporting roles a lot of guest roles guest parts co-guests that kind of thing i yeah. think the one time you did have a lead role was in a, a project called exit o exit which one exit zero yeah exit zero, o. Sorry. Exit zero. yeah you yeah. played jack Jack, right. Absolutely. Yeah, that was that was a fun one, too. That was a fun one. Well, I also got a, the lead role in the, in the TV pilot we we did. We it, it won a bunch of awards in, in, in several of the festivals. It's called the Cavone, the Gavone, you know? Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes. Right. And I'm the, I'm the Gavone. And we're, we're shooting another episode of that. Um, we have to we did the first reading. We do the reading. We're going to shoot it probably another month or two. So well, that's, he's, a that's a comedy, right? Yeah, it's a comedy. And I've done, I've worked with so many comedians. Um, yeah, I've been in Marvelous Miss Maisel. I've been in Master of None. I've worked, I probably worked with more comedians. I, I was in SNL. I don't know if you saw me do the, the, cold, the cold opening live from New York Saturday night. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I mean, if uh, I did a movie with Ray Romano last year, that's going to be out, um, that's coming out to theaters in April. And he's in there, uh, Sebastian Maniscalco. Is in it, Lori Metcalf and Tony Lobianco. And talk about an old time. Oh, yes, I saw the advertisement for it. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah just cool. just came out. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's it's coming out in theaters. Yeah, I saw. I was we did the screening. I was at the screening in Tribeca. That was a lot of fun. But I worked with some of the some great comedians. Um, I was in the kitchen, which is also kind of like a Westies mob. It was the about the women. The, the, about yeah, the women I played mob. a hitman in there. Um, worked with Tiffany Haddish, Melissa McCarthy. Couple of really good good, good comedians there. Uh, who else? Ray Romano, uh, Aziz Ansari, and I've got you know Miss Maisel, uh, mm -hmm. Rachel Brosnahan, and Alex Borstein. And yeah, I played a priest with a shift there, right? Well, you so, know what? It's funny that that kind of falls into your into your area because you studied theology. I did. I went to seminary and graduated. I did. That's right, New York Theological Seminary. And it was while I was in seminary, or you know, when I was kind of like. Uh, learning how to preach and things like that when I realized that I was just performing and I said you know I missed being on the stage in front of the camera so that was kind of the full circle of it but uh this year also I don't know if you were a fan of any Ryan Murphy's work but American Horror Story this season it was called Bandana it was in New York City uh and it was kind of about New York City in the 80s and it's about the gay community and the AIDS epidemic and all that stuff. But a lot of those clubs were backed by the mob. And if you watch the season, they keep talking about, oh, you know, you know who we pay off. You know, we can't, you know, we can't make a statement, this and that. And then finally, near the end, like the mobster comes down. They got to meet the mobster because they're writing articles. And I'm the mobster. 
you know, yeah. I'm the I'm the I'm the guy, and I tell them they got to you know, you got to do the hit, you got to get rid of the guy who's writing these articles because he's he's hurting the money. Uh, so yeah, if you watch that, I'll, I'll show you that scene. It's probably up on my reel or, or wherever. It, it's a really good mob scene. I get to play opposite uh, Dennis O'Hare. I don't know if you if we could share any of the probably can't screen share the pictures here, but uh, yeah, Dennis O'Hare, great, uh, great, great uh, Emmy Award winning uh, nominated actor. I get to play opposite him. I play the mobster, and he's like the gay hitman. So uh, it, it's good. It was a good, good, good show. Really, really interesting. Uh, you know, American Horror Story. They've had some great people over the years in their Lady Gaga and that. And then what else? Uh, Law and Order, Organized Crime. I just did recently. I was just about to mention the Law and Order. Yeah, Organized Crime. I've done a couple of Law and Orders, but this one was, more, you know, the Organized Crime one. I play like a guy who's got uh, Italian restaurant kind of feel. Yeah, Tommaso, right. It's got mob ties. He's eating or something like that. Yeah. yeah. But you also have another project that's on the back burner on the on the uh on the rise right now called City of Fire. City of Fire, yeah. I've got, I have uh, six of eight episodes in there. I'm not I'm not the lead character or anything, but that'll be coming out in May on Apple TV. Uh it's about an NYU student who gets murdered in Central Park. So it, it, should, it should be an interesting story. Apple's put a lot of money into a lot of different projects. You know, they want the market and the streaming market is very competitive between Paramount Plus, Disney, uh, Hulu. Uh, I'm going to be coming out and movie on Hulu next week uh, called The Boston Strangler, with, uh, where I get to play opposite Kyra Knightley, uh, which, which is great. I play New York City detective. Yeah, I get the detective sometimes the, uh, as well. Guys, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, if, I, if you were to if i was to ask you if there's any actor do you work with many if there was one actor that you've been so happy to work with and has there been an actor that you wish you hope to work with in the in 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 near future yeah i uh well one actor i had wished to work with uh it, and and i just did work with him just now it's not out yet and uh, um is robert de niro you know so i i mean i had i worked i did joker i got to watch him and joaquin phoenix work for about 11 days and uh and i did the irishman but i got to work opposite joe pesci in there but this i i just finished rabbit it's up on imdb so it's i i have what's called a um a social media blackout from Warner Brothers. I'll, hey, I'll grab it for these guys a little <laughs> Called Complete Social Media Blackout. So this is a uh, Warner Brothers. I'm really not. So what this means, I'm not, not allowed to, to talk or take any pictures on this this movie. That, uh, mm -hmm. But it's up on IMDb. So it's not like, you know, it's not, uh, you know, it's not total. Um, there's some public information out there on it. The movie's called Wise Guys. Right, the name will likely be changed, um, but it's written by Nicola, Nicholas uh, Pelleggi, who yeah. also wrote the, the book Wise Guys, which I don't know why they call him this Wise Guys, which was made into the movie Goodfellas, which yeah. Robert played, mm -hmm. right? Which is the the Jimmy Burke story from uh, the Lufthansa heist. Those those guys from Canarsie. Um, yeah, we had Paul Paul. Um, What's his name? Played Paul Cicero. Uh, Paulie Savino played that played that role in there, and Ray Liotta. It was, it was a great classic mob movie, right? one of the best mob movies ever made. So we 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 already it's already shot, it's already done. Uh, directed by the great Barry Levinson, uh, and it's called Wise Guys right now. It was changed to Alto Nights. I don't know if they're gonna, what what name they'll give it when they're ready to do it. But we finished shooting. I was I've been shooting it since. Uh, since December, I play um, Paolo Gambino in the movie. And when I rapped, you know, they, they give you the back of the, um, oh, here's the, uh, you know, oh, nice. chair. this is on the back of your chair. And my <laughs> character's name is right there, Carlo. So I play, uh, I play Carlo Gambino in this one, which I don't really look too much like, but maybe a younger Carlo, but. <laughs> And anyway, so I took this off the trailer after three months of shooting. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, so this, uh, 
the interesting thing with this is I, I actually got to go down and um, I had, we were talking about auditions and the Zoom thing and how before we started the thing. Uh, a lot of auditions are done with the self tape now and then sometimes you'll get a Zoom call back. Well, in this case, I had to go, go in and do a, what we call a chemistry read. I was up for one of the very big parts, which I didn't think I was going to get, but um, I did get a nice part. I got, you know, I'm in, I'm in, I worked on the movie for a couple of months, so I'm there. I don't have a, it's not the lead that I had read for, like a, a lot what they call a large supporting. Uh, but I got to go in and, and read audition, what's called the chemistry read with, with, with Bob, with Bob De Niro. So I went in and did some scene work with him for about 25 minutes. Uh, and then they said, hey, you know, not that part, but would you read for Bonanno, Profaci, Lucchese? And, and then they wanted to give me Gambino. And then they had me going again and read with Bob uh, for some other scene work. Uh, he's playing two characters in the movie. Yeah, I don't get that one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. You know, I mean, I was there, so I seen the whole thing unfold. But uh, there's some prosthetics involved. You know, he's he's not looking like the same person when he's playing Carl, uh, when he's playing Vito Genovese or Frank Costello. Obviously. I mean, it's both both guys look totally different. Yeah, he looks, I know. He and and he, he looks different. He looks different on there. And it's interesting that, you know, he's going to do scenes opposite himself. So th th they're already shot and everything. We'll see how, how, how do the editors make this magic work. I'm sure they'll they'll do a great yeah, job. Okay. <laughs> it should be it should be really interesting interesting project I mean, there's been a lot of press on, there hasn't been a lot of press but there's been press on it you know in in mm -hmm. deadline and in variety and in the industry periodicals it's up on it's up on imdb and on wikipedia so uh it's not a secret but we'll, we'll see uh you know the script is more secret which i'm not going to talk about but oh uh, yeah i was just about to ask you because i'm curious myself even though i'm not i'm not gonna lie I'm not a big De Niro fan, but um, that's only because of his mouth. But nonetheless, uh, would you be able to give us a premise of the story? I'm curious. Yeah, so it's, it's you know, it loosely, it, the script is interesting and has some, because this is a, it's, it's a biopic in a sense, right? This is like this, these characters are known and this, their background and the stories are known. So uh, pretty much as, as history bears out, um, you know, Vito Genovese had to go on the lam for some years, which, which he did. Yeah. And he left Frank Costello, gave it to Frank Costello. And when he came back, he wanted his, his shit back and, uh, or some of it. And, you know, Frank was willing to work with him and, um, it, you know, there was the, uh, the, you know, the, the drug business, Vito Genovese, which he went away for later on, the heroin uh, business. And uh, Frank, you know, as history tells us, if you just go on Wikipedia or whatever, you know, didn't want him to get involved with that. And then, um, you know, we know from history that the chin Sorry. tried to shoot Frank Costello in the head and he, he hit him in the head and it went around his head. And uh, yeah, so, you know, Genovese wanted to, to finish oh. things up. Costello wanted to retire and Anastasia got in the middle of it. And uh, he had a bad ending as well. I mean, that's, you know, it's pretty much the history. Okay. Of it. So it takes place. So it's a time period, I guess, 60s into the 70s, something like that. No, no 50s. It's 1957. Yeah. Anastasia is killed in 57. Yeah, 57. Right. Right. So it's really the 50s. But there are some, you know, flashbacks of when they were kids and, you know, fast forwards of when, you know, at the end of their life, uh, whatever, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, which will, you know, when the movie's out, you'll see all that Carlo, stuff. Carlo didn't die until 76. Yeah, I remember, I, I know, I lived a few blocks away from him. Uh, I remember he had the modest uh, house. I lived on Neck Road, he lived on uh, Avenue W. I was on East 7, he was on Ocean Parkway, a block away. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, you know, they're a very modest house there, and, uh, you know, we didn't want to ring the bell, we were trick-or-treating. I remember when he died, they had a big, big, thing. oh, well, gee, there was like that, you know, it was like a big, big, uh, thing there in the church. I remember that as a kid, but uh, yeah. Well, that's so I, I, well, that's I never fine. thought I never thought I would be playing this. Like if you're a kid, if you just said, "Hey, you're gonna be when you grow up, you're gonna be an actor and you're gonna play that mob boss," you know, in a movie with Robert De Niro, I would never think that would that would be factual. But 
Yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. Um, well, well, that's kind of my next question, actually. And growing up in that area, especially in the Ocean Parkway in that area, yeah. which I, I know the area well, um, I mean, you must have come in contact or seen that kind of life. That must have been so much. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're when you're a young Italian kid, uh, you know, when you're a poor young Italian kid and, and you grow, you live in those neighborhoods, you see the, uh, you know, the flashing cash and the big back then the big Cadillacs and diamond rings and, and, you know, so it's easy to get, uh, you know, it'd be impossible not to know those people. You know, I, I had grown up in those neighborhoods and, and, you know, knew, knew all of those guys and hung around all those places as a kid growing up. So I was very much exposed to that, uh, which I guess in a way would <laughs> help me uh, in my preparation for these roles. I think, I think a lot of times I'm just cast to be myself in these roles. So, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just you know that that guy from the neighborhood, and I fit into that world well. So well, did, uh, did, did that when, when you, before you got into acting, before you went to the performing arts, before that, did did the street ever pull at you a little bit? Did you ever get? Yeah, but, but actually, after you know, um, well, you know, I, I <laughs> as a kid, I worked at a restaurant. Uh, you know, I was a busboy there for about four or five years, a restaurant called the Gratadoro. And I used to I used to park Carmine Lombardoza's Rolls Royce. Lombardoza, oh, really? Wow. Yeah, before his Rolls Royce, he had a Cadillac. It was a, it was a beautiful Cadillac. That's, you know, how far back I go with with these guys. Yeah. So he used to come in the lounge. I would park his, you know, he'd come in, I'd park his car and, and then run back in. He'd come in the daytime and hold court. So, yeah, you know, I was around a lot of that as a kid. Uh, you, you see it, you kind of, you know, it is what it is, you know. I did, did. I mean, did it ever? Did you ever think? Did it ever, did it ever attract you to get involved in that kind of world, or, or no? Uh, well, I mean, you know, we look you're a young kid. You're looking for opportunities and this and that. You think there's opportunities there, so uh, you know, the street life kind of probably calls most young kids without very lot. Without, I didn't have a lot of opportunities, so yeah, of course, of course, that stuff. Uh, interest me and called me i dealt i dealt cards as a kid and after hour joints and things like that so i grew up in that world if you really want to know i don't oh. want to i'm not going to elaborate on it i'm not going to tell you where the bodies are buried if that's what you want to know yeah i'm also you know the interesting thing you know i learned how to deal cards as a kid i ran blackjack games and stuff and i was i've been cast a couple of times as a as, as a card dealer i uh in a comedy call uh well, I did one on uh, a craps play in a movie called Bounty Hunter. I did another blackjack dealer in a TV show called Quantico. And then uh, a couple of times well, uh, uh, with, with the comedian Aquafina, I did uh, an episode with her. And uh, Nora from Queens is her show on Comedy Central. I played a blackjack dealer. The whole episode is pretty somewhere, much. Somewhere in Queens? No, no, it's called uh, Nora from Queens. The, the the Asian comedian Aquafina. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's uh, she's the lead, and uh, I got to do an episode with her as, as the blackjack dealer. Yeah, yeah. I usually get called for those parts a lot too. You know, the guy who runs. I remember as uh, one of my earlier roles, who I just got to work with. Well, I didn't work opposite her, but I saw her in the hotel. They had us in. You know, we did the the narrow movie out in Ohio. So uh, we shot it out there, which was, was interesting. I mean, it's a big budget film. Um, so they had me in a five star hotel and I, I ran into Deborah Messing in the lobby one day. You know, she's playing one of De Niro's wives and Captain Oducci's playing the other wife because he's playing two characters. Right. And uh, yeah, I was talking with her because I had worked with her when she was doing a show called Mysteries of Laura. I played like a, uh, you know, a guy at the racetrack waiting online to play, to play a bet. You know, I have this whole thing with her. Uh, so yeah, I get called like you know to be the street guy, the knock around guy, the mob guy, the gambling guy, uh, <laughs> the detective. Some of the, some detectives are not too far away from mobsters. You know, I they just they just haven't got caught. Some of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's. Uh, but this movie coming out should be really interesting. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It's a really 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 good opportunity to. Uh, 
to uh, to work to work with De Niro and and be part of it and and Barry Levinson to see his process, and then I got to work with Michael Spoli again. So he he plays Albert Anastasia in there. So uh, outside of the acting, now you teach acting. So yeah, so right. So I have an acting. So I've been doing that for um, probably about six seven years now before COVID. Uh, at a Ripley Grass Studios, uh, that's where I rent space in Manhattan. I have, you know, an in-person class in the studio that I was doing before COVID. And when COVID happened, um, I wanted to keep the community intact. So I wound up doing the online thing that we're doing here, the Zoom thing. And I wound up with, uh, you know, I do three Zoom, three Zoom classes a week and an in-person class. Uh, every day is different classes. So I have actors who I work with in, in LA, Canada, you know, Atlanta market, Southeast, uh, all over. And of course, New York. And uh, a lot of my act, every day, one of my actors are getting on TV. Every every day, different night. We had one who booked Law and Order Organized Crime yesterday, uh, a couple of Law and Orders, Blue Bloods, like all different, you know, TV shows that get them on. We had one kid got a series regular role. So I'm probably a better teacher than I am actor. And I would say that teaching acting is a lot easier than actually doing it. Uh, but um, I'm in a pretty fortunate position because I also do it and teach it. So I have a really unique insight into how it's actually done. A lot, a lot of teachers don't act and have never had a successful audition. So I actually do this. I, I've been, you know, auditioning for uh, probably about what year were you now? Uh, probably a good 15 years. Mm -hmm. So, which isn't long in comparison to other actors my age. I started acting, you know, in my 40s, and now I'll, I'll be 60 this year. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing it a while. Yeah. You're still young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's uh, I started a little late, but I, I've been able to scratch the surface, so. Uh, um, uh, if, if you were to tell us, um, what anything else you got going on or what we well actually i want to actually want to ask you another question have you ever think of producing on your own i you know yeah i do i write i've been writing for years i've studied a little screenwriting and you know like look i'm surrounded by by different scripts and sides all the time I mean, that's what i do every day i teach people every day people get auditions we assign scenes we're reading scripts so i write as well i've written a few things um I, I have produced a couple of shorts years ago, but um, yeah, I, I, I have some, it has some stuff in mind that I'd, I'd like to do. And, you know, if I had a little more time, I'd be able to finish, finish something and maybe produce it and put it together. But I'd like to do it the right way. I don't want to do, I don't want to do like a work for pizza film, you know, so. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> You're right, 100%. That makes sense. Yeah, so, you know. Uh, we'll see. I have a couple of ideas. I, I have a I, I have a couple of dramas I've written. I have a, a, a an interesting comedy that has a, a, I have a premise for an interesting comedy that has like mob roots in it. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm well, interested. Based, based on that, um, what have you preferred to act? Do you prefer acting doing drama or doing comedy? Uh, interesting. You know, I I mean, I'm more of I've, I've obviously done. I've done a lot of comedies too. I, I have to pull up my own IMDb to look, but uh, let me see. I've, yeah, I've done. I, I I mean, I'm more of a dramatic actor, but I do get cast a lot in in comedies. Um, if I could look at some of the comedies, I you know, like working with Ray Romano, Sebastian Maniscalco, uh, you know, Aquafina, as I said, uh, Aziz Ansari. Um, yeah, I've been around a lot of comedians, Tiffany Haddish, Melissa McCarthy. So I've been lucky. SNL. I don't know if you've seen the SNL skit uh, that I've done. If, if you look, I have a comedy reel where it's just comedy shows, Marvelous Miss Maisel. And, uh, you know, so yeah. I, I, I've done a lot of, of comedy shows. But, you know, when you're an actor, it's just really work. You know, you want to work and you want to stay working. I have uh, Power Book Three, Raising Cain, and I'll. Well, I'm playing a priest in that one. That'll be coming out soon this season. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I'm not. I'm not like a stand. I know a lot of actor or fellow actors who they do a lot of stand-up comedy. I'm not a stand-up comedian. 
uh, although I, you know, when I teach my acting classes, it feels a little like a stand-up uh, <laughs> comedy routine. <laughs> uh, have you have you ever done any theater? I don't remember. I have, yeah, I have. I have done some theater. I I, um, I I I have, but not in recent times. And the reason I I don't uh, well, it's not because well, number one, they probably won't let me, but. <laughs> theater is theater is a different commitment. It's uh, I would I would love to do theater, and I'd love to have a theater group. Uh, I just wish I had more time because, you know, the acting school where I teach. That's kind of my theater community. It's a theater community for, for film and television actors. Is the way I like to look at it, um, where we're a community there supporting each other. Uh, but I, I would love to have our own theater group where we can go and, and do the stage. And I'd love to write a play and do it, even if it's a one man play or, or something. You know, I have so many ideas and things I love to do, but it's just never enough time to really, uh, you know, make it happen. Um, the reason why I, I, I can't do theater now and, and is because uh, you know, theater, you got six week or weeks of rehearsal, and then if you go on stage, you're locked in. So it would be, I wouldn't be able to do the film and television stuff that I'd like to do if I if I were uh, committed to a theater, you know, to a show. So I, I don't go out for theater. I don't audition for it. It doesn't fit with, you know, my teaching in the school. It's just it's too uh, too demanding time wise. If you, so far, so, so many years have you been teaching the classes so far? Yeah, yeah, the school is great. I mean, it's, it's, and it keeps me grounded with the acting. And when I'm looking at another, you missed this one, Gotham. I played one of the Falcones, Capos. Forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> I think I've seen you in that one, too. I believe. Yeah. Um, but like I was saying, in, in the seven years that you've taught, you, from what I, I from what I understand, what you were saying earlier, you had some actors that you had some success stories. Oh, tons! Every week, another one of our actors gets on TV. Every week, another one of our actors gets their first role. We had a girl uh, get her first, you know, first professional role on a network show. Uh, the uh, yesterday, two days ago, uh, Law and Order: Organized Crime. So what what I do? I don't have a shirt. Let me hold on. I get, so I have these purple shirts. They're just kind of like this mask, and it says, uh, "It says I booked network TV." It's a purple shirt, right? It has the school logo with the website. This, this is the mask, but uh, yeah. So every time somebody books, uh, <laughs> whenever somebody books, uh, you know, their first network gig, we give them a T-shirt. So I, I had ordered 100 t-shirts and then another 100 so i've gone through 200 t-shirts oh, already wow. and i don't have any more t-shirts <laughs> and the company that was making it for me went out of business so i don't know how many more, but uh, so at least 200 actors have gotten their first role oh wow, that's awesome yeah some bigger roles some just a couple of lines but uh yeah you know we get a lot of the casting directors come in and uh meet our actors a lot of the the casting directors know know my acting community and they, and they like our actors and it's a it's a legitimate it's a legitimate uh, source for them to pull from and it's a legitimate source for people to learn from to learn to learn the right way the professional way there's a lot of a lot of gimmicks out there there's a lot of BS and for actors starting out a lot of them get pulled in the wrong directions uh, they get pulled you know. Uh, thinking to go here, to go there, to go, you know, I, I obviously know the right way to do this because I do it every day. You know, mm -hmm. I'm working, I think last year, uh, in the 12 months I was on set every month of the year on, on one project, I did book like eight projects. So uh, I do this and I do it from the audition room. There's no, you know, I go in and audition like every other actor and, uh, you know, I guess I'm pretty good at it and, and lucky as well. You always have to be lucky in this business, you know. Uh, so when actors learn from me, they're learning the right way. You know, whether they're able to do it or not, it's a different story. Whether they get a little lucky or not is, a little, is another story. But uh, what I'm teaching is, is the right stuff. I can only teach the stuff that I've learned and what's worked for me. Right. You know, that's, that's the main thing. Um, yeah. 
you know, and there's a lot, there's a lot of BS and nonsense out there, gimmicks and bells and whistles. But uh, of course, yeah, what we're doing is a good thing. Oh, awesome. Well, James, listen, we're coming to like close to the end of the show. I, uh, well, number one, I'd like to definitely uh, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. And um, if you could just tell the audience the name of your acting school, so people yeah, can know. It's, it's, yeah, it's co- it's called Show Up to Book the Role, or the Actors Axiom. So if you type in showuptobookthewrold.com, you'll find our website and you can reach me there if you're interested in studying with me. Uh, we, have, we have some really, really good program. We have classes Monday, Wednesday, nighttime, Saturday afternoon. I had to just, you know, finish, as I said, I had to finish the class before I came on. And Thursday nights in person in Manhattan and New York City at Ripley Greer Studios. So uh, yeah, and there's other opportunities we, I'm, I'm able to plug a lot of my actors in with agents and managers and get them representation so they can get on TV. And I have a lot of relationships with casting directors where uh, I'm able to help the actors uh, try and get their face out there with, with the right people. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, that's what we do. Awesome. So it's good stuff. Well, James, again, thank you very much for coming on. Everybody got to look out for James for the new Wise Guy movie. Uh, where he plays with uh, Carlo Gambino, somebody <laughs> who's a classic gangster. <laughs> oh, James. Uh, <laughs> well, again, thank you, James. And uh, guys, please like, share, subscribe, of course, for the show. Leave comments if you like for James, for me, for my dog, whoever you like. <laughs> Check you guys up in the next episode. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you very much. <laughs>